every week, I mean, every three or four days consistently throughout the, the last six months, you have seen Donald Trump in the trending Facebook bar, which means a lot. When people are logging onto their Facebook accounts, they're seeing, oh, Trump said something about, about Muslim. Trump said... Liz, hey, stand by just one second, yeah. because Marco Rubio, I'm told, is now taking questions of reporters. Let's go straight to that. We're going to get a lot of delegates and be ready to fight next Saturday and, and beyond as we head into Florida and the winter take all. Senator, why did you... No. Go ahead. Why did you wait until the Houston debate to lay into Donald Trump? Well, you know, I hoped that in this process we would have the voters would wake up and see increasingly what Donald Trump is as a con artist. And I think we were all caught off guard by how much attention he's garnered in the media. I mean, he gets a 10 to 1 advantage in coverage. It's really lifted him. He had the president or somebody at CBS yesterday basically admit that Donald Trump may not be good for America, but he's good for business for CBS. So you've had a, this artificial buildup of him, and I think finally the time had come. I think it's also important to remember that up until last week, I was taking incoming attacks from multiple candidates, too. So I had to deal with those issues. But I think the time has come now that he's the front runner. He's now won three states in a row. He's leading in national polls to finally unmask him for what he is, a world-class con artist. Senator, you spent the first sort of three days of the past five attacking Donald Trump pretty sharply and then yesterday walked that back a little bit. There were members, I've not walked it back. There were members in the audience that wanted you to read his tweets or talk about no. his fingers and you said, no, we're going to get serious. So why even sort of talk about those things in the first place? And why well, that's not my campaign. Look, Donald Trump has been bullying people for a year, insulting people. Every now and then a bully needs a taste of their own medicine, but that's not going to be what my campaign is. Well, why I mean, to begin with? sometimes when someone gets out of hand, as he does, someone needs to be reminded that they too can be attacked and humiliated and mocked. Uh, bullies need to be stood up to, and I was proud and happy to do it. But it's not going to change my campaign and what we're about. I do think it's important to reveal him for the serious problem, which is that he's a con artist and that he's trying to con the American people into believing that he's this great leader. This is a guy who says he's running against the politicians, but he says basically any position he has is negotiable. Why doesn't he tell the New York Times to reveal the audio recording of the interview that he did with them so he could know his real views on immigration? It's just one con job after another. And unfortunately, the consequences where he to carry out this con job is he's going to be the nominee of our party. He's going to define conservatism, and that would be a disaster for America. Senator, um, you've laid out these markers for today, expectations for Florida uh, in a couple of weeks. Um, do you feel in control of your own destiny here with this primary, or do you think you still have a couple things need to kind of go your way? Well, I don't control I mean, I've said this repeatedly. All these things are in God's hands. God's will is going to be done. I certainly think all I can do is my best, and I think our best is going to be good enough to get to the number we need. I can tell you this for a fact, guys. No one is ever going to beg me to get out of this race so we can coalesce around Donald Trump. Uh, Donald Trump is the most unusual frontrunner we've ever had. He is someone that can't be elected in November. He would be a disaster for the conservative movement. A vote for Donald Trump is literally a vote for Hillary Clinton in November. They are salivating at the prospects of running against him. Uh, it would be, he would be a disaster for America. He would split our party in half. Uh, Donald Trump will never have 1,237 delegates, and I'm going to campaign as long as it takes beyond Florida. I'm going to campaign as long as it takes to ensure that our party does not fall under the control of a con artist. How much do your chances in Florida hinge on how well you do tonight? Do you need to post a good show? No, we have a great campaign in Florida. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter who endorses Donald Trump, who lines up with him. These things are not going to influence us moving forward in this campaign anywhere we go. We, have, we know our state. I know the state. I know how to win campaigns in Florida. We're going to do well, and we're going to win Florida. That I'm confident of. But that won't be enough. We've got to keep winning after that as well, and we will. Uh, I, think, uh, I think people will be surpri pleasantly surprised. Tonight is supposed to be Ted Cruz's night. It's not going to go as well for him as he planned. Tonight was the night where this campaign was supposed to end and Ted Cruz would sew up the nomination. Obviously, that's not going to happen. Um, and, and, but we're going to get a lot of delegates tonight. I mean, a lot of delegates. And that really is going to position us strongly to, to go into next Saturday and beyond. Is it going to go better, better for you than expected? Well, we're working on that. Obviously, I don't know what people expect for tonight. We certainly weren't expected to win Super Tuesday, uh, but I think we're going to do very well. We're going to have a lot of delegates after tonight, and you're going to see very clearly after tonight that Donald Trump has no chance of ever getting the delegates he needs to be the nominee. If Ted Cruz uh, has, a, has a bad night, you said, and loses Texas, do you think he should get out? And I know he likes to get into this game about people dropping out. I'm not calling on anyone to drop out. Let's let the voters decide. He has a right to stay in this as long as he wants to. I can tell you that his whole campaign for months has been built on winning Iowa, winning South Carolina, and winning big on Super Tuesday. He won Iowa, but he didn't win. He came in third in South Carolina, and he's not going to win big on Super Tuesday. So I think there's a lot of questions about Ted Cruz's campaign. If you can't sweep up Super Tuesday, where in this country are you going to have a big showing? Because it only gets worse from here for him. It only gets better for us, and I feel good about it. Uh, Why well, have a rally in, in Florida and not a Super Tuesday state? 
Well, because at that point we want to kick off our campaign in Florida there tonight. So that's why we're doing it. I mean, if you're now just four, two weeks away, tonight is two weeks away from the Florida primary, so it's a good chance to kick off our campaign there in the state. Um, we have to leave again tomorrow to be in Michigan, and then I know we've got some other trips planned in some of the uh, Saturday states, and uh, the following Tuesday there's another slew of states voting. So it gave us a chance to kind of kick off our campaign tonight in a place, uh, uh, also to visit our, our people there that have start opened up our offices and so forth before we have to get back on the road and be outside of Florida for a few more days. Donald Trump responded to the small hands comment by saying, he said, I have small hands. I've never heard that before. <laughs> I've always heard people say, Donald, you have the most beautiful hands. Yeah. Do you well, have a response to that? Yeah, he's just a thin-skinned guy. I mean, he's so thin-skinned and you know, so erratic. And to think you're going to make someone like that commander-in-chief. I mean, I want people to think about that. The President of the United States has access to the most powerful military in the world. The President of the United States makes decisions as commander-in-chief that are literally life or death. And we're going to put that in the hands of this erratic, unpredictable person uh, who's so thin-skinned and takes offense at anything. He's great at dishing out insults, but boy, does he get touchy when someone hits him back. And that was my point to your question, Alex. People ask about, you know, why do you say these things? To prove a point. This guy's really good at dishing it out. He sure doesn't like it when people make fun of him. And he's been making fun of everybody for the last year. Women, the disabled, everyone you can imagine. He's made, attacked Jeb Bush's mom. He's attacked, you know, the, the great first lady, Barbara Bush. He's, he's made fun and mocked everybody. This guy is a vulgarian who goes around insulting people, and he wants us to make him the president of the United States. He'd be a president where our children, we'd have to basically explain to them every single day why they should not look up to and not imitate the president. So I think what this reveals is how thin-skinned this guy is and how unfit he is to be the commander-in-chief and the president of the most important country in the world. Last speaking of, speaking, of, speaking of Bush, do you plan to meet with him when you're in Miami? And have you spoken to him about potentially endorsing him? Yeah, I, I've spoken to Jeb, but the contents of our conversations I'm obviously not going to reveal. But uh, we remain good friends. And, and of course, I look forward to seeing him now during the campaign beyond it. But I'm not going to discuss conversations with him. Do you risk lowering you yourself to him? Do I what? Do you, do you risk lowering yourself to Donald Trump's level by sort of... No, because I don't do that every day. I mean, that's happened once, and just to prove the point that he's thin-skinned and that he likes to insult people, but he doesn't like when someone hits him back. That's very typical of insecure people like this. They like to dish it out, but they don't like to take it. And that's what I intended to reveal, but that's not my campaign, and that's not what we do every day, and it's not what we're going to do. Uh, my campaign is going to remain on the issues. I mean, I continue to talk about our aspirational vision for America's future, but I think it's our obligation to point out to Republican voters and Americans across this country that Donald Trump is a first-class con artist. And a first-class con artist is now trying to get a hold of the party of Lincoln and Reagan. And by the way, he still has not condemned the Ku Klux Klan. I mean, we, we have never in the history of the modern republic had a presidential candidate in either party that refuses to condemn a racist like David Duke or the Ku Klux Klan. It's now three days running. When is this guy going to condemn the Ku Klux Klan? After Super Tuesday? It's a real outrage, and he is unelectable and unfit for office, and he's a con artist, and we can't elect the con artist. Do you think he's dodging it, it? Do you think he's dodging it because of these southern states? I don't know why. You'll have to ask him. Bottom line is, uh, the Republic, there is no place in the Republican Party for someone who refuses to condemn the KKK at the first chance they're given, not to mention three days later. If any other candidate in this race would have done that, they would have been descended upon constantly. But I think you need to be asking him that question. Why won't you condemn the Ku Klux Klan? It's now been three days, and he refuses to do it. Thanks, guys. Guys, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good flight.